Are you just getting your start in setting up a home lab or self-hosting? If you're looking for an intuitive way to host multiple applications without the steep learning curve, Casa OS might just be your solution. Let's take a look at what we need to get started. First and foremost, we're going to need a Linux machine to run it on. Typically, for something like this, you would use Debian or Ubuntu server. However, there is community support for elementary OS and Armbian as well. You can also use a Raspberry Pi with Raspberry Pi OS if that's more your speed. Through the power of filmmaking, we are going to jump over to an installed Ubuntu virtual machine. All right, as you can see on your screen here, we've got a machine running at 172.16.74.10. And we're going to go ahead and SSH into that machine. All right, we're connected. And as you can see, there are no updates that need to be applied at this point in time. So once you're logged in by SSH, we need to run a script to do the install. Now, the standard disclaimer applies that if you don't know what's in the script, you should download the script first and look through it. So let's take a look at how to do that just to put people's minds at ease. So the standard way to run the installer would be to paste in this line here. What we want to do is take that script and put it in install.sh. Okay, so now we've got these, the script. If we do an ls, we can see install.sh is there. And we can do nano install.sh. So you don't need to understand everything that's in this script right now, but it's worth looking through and you should be able to make sense of some of it. Even if you're not a programmer or have previous experience with bash scripting. So if we scroll down through, we've got some comments in here. These are globals. You can think of them as variables. If you remember back from your algebra class back in high school. So we've got some things set up there. Requirements configuration path. So we've got some things set up here. We've got colors, helpers, and then the items that have the parentheses afterwards are functions, not hugely important. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to towards the end and you'll get a better idea of what's going on. Okay, this is sort of the meat and potatoes of the script here. Step zero, get download URL domain. And it has a function that it's going to run. Step two, check the OS. You want to make sure that it's going to run on your particular OS or that your OS has the proper capabilities to run Casa OS. Check distribution, check memory and disk space. Again, this is just trying to do some initial checks to make sure that the installer is not going to fail partway through. Update packages, install dependencies, and check dependency installation. So it's going to install known needed dependencies and then check and make sure that everything has been installed properly afterwards. Check Docker install, configure add-ons, Download and install Casa OS, check service status, and then display the welcome banner, which will show the IP address and instructions for logging into Casa OS. All right, we can exit out of this and go ahead and to the next step. Since we downloaded the script this way, we need to make it executable. So we say chmod plus x install.sh. And then we can say sudo dot slash install dot sh, ask for the password. You can see it working its magic. And here in a few minutes, it will complete the process. We can't stop here. We need to grab the IP address and move over to the web browser and get logged in for the first time. Again, we referenced this at the beginning, but our IP address here is 172.16.74.10. Let's head to the web browser. And we're greeted with Casa OS. We're gonna click the go button to get started. Enter a username and your password twice. 
click Create and accept the prompt, and we're at the Casa OS dashboard. Of course, we can't stop here. We've got the base setup done, but we need to start configuring some applications. Let's take a look at that right now. Prominently displayed on your screen is the App Store. And as you can see, by default, it's showing that we've got 110 apps available. So we are gonna select one and install it. We're gonna use Uptime Kuma, and we'll say Install. As you can see, no configuration was necessary. And now that it's done, it's taken us back to the dashboard. Now let's take a quick look at Uptime Kuma just to verify that it is in fact running. We'll click on the Uptime Kuma icon. And since this is the first time in it, it's gonna prompt us to create a username and a password. And we've got to the dashboard for Uptime Kuma. So one thing you should take note of is here in the address bar, it is using the same IP address as the Casa OS server itself. However, it is using port number 3001 on that server. You'll need this if you wanna go directly to your Uptime Kuma server later on. Since this is not a tutorial on Uptime Kuma, we're gonna go ahead and just log out and we'll go back to Casa OS. But what if you're not satisfied with just the base 110 applications that are showing up in the App Store by default? Well, there's a solution for that. If we open up the App Store, we come over to here where it says 110 apps and click more apps. It gives you this little box. There are third party application repositories that are available for Casa OS. We're gonna use the repository for linuxserver.io and if we paste that URL in the box and click add, you'll see that it's gone from 110 to 299 applications. Close this and go back in to the App Store. And then if we click the all drop down and scroll down, you can see that you can choose linuxserver.io as a filter and it will show specifically those applications that are from that repository. But there's more we can do. We can add to our dashboard other servers on our network. Let's take a look at how to do that right now. If you come over here to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see this plus icon and you can say add external link. And this will let you add other servers on your network or other cloud servers that might be outside of your network, but something that you have control of. So for our purposes, we're going to add one of my Proxbox servers. 172.16.74.228. And we're gonna call this PVE02 and say connect. And we've got a new icon here on the dashboard for PVE02. If we click that, I didn't add the port number. <laughs> port number 8006. Now we'll try this again, PVE02, and it opens up our Proxmox, and we can log in, and as you can see here, PVE02. Now that we've got things set up and humming along nicely, how do we protect our installation? There are a lot of opinions out there on how to do a backup for Casa OS. Let's talk about a couple of those right now. First, since we are in fact using Proxmox to run our Casa OS, don't discount the usefulness of the snapshot feature. You install an application or make a change, shut it down, take a snapshot, you're good to go, and you can move on. Let's run through that process right now. If we come up here to settings, we can say shut down. Are you sure? Yes. And it's going to shut down. Pop back over to our Proxmox, and you can see it turned gray, so that is in fact shut down. We can say take snapshot, task OK, and then we can fire this back up. Now, another way you could do this is by using Clonezilla or Rescuezilla. This will be useful if you're using either a VM or running it on bare metal. There is a third way to do backups and one that I have not yet tried. 
There is a set of steps for the Big Bear Tech World Forum that detail how to back up Casa OS. Again, your mileage may vary on this, and at least until you're comfortable with this set of steps, you may want to use it in parallel with using RescueZilla or CloneZilla, just to make sure. Now you've got Casa OS set up and know your way around the system, it's time to make it your own. If you're using Casa OS already, leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite application is to use on top of Casa OS. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.